Hello, I'm Vivi Price. I'm the editor of NewMexicoMercury.com. I'm here today with old friend and longtime journalist and writer in New Mexico and around the country, Jose Armas, who's going to talk today about his views of uh, the gubernatorial election and the performance so far of Governor uh, Susana Martinez. Um, Jose wrote a weekly column for many years at the Albuquerque Journal and uh, the Albuquerque Tribune. Uh, he, he founded uh, De Colores, uh, one of the first uh, Chicano publishing houses in the country, launched a Hispanic uh, magazine, and was a ghostwriter of all things for uh, speeches for governors uh, Jerry Apodaca, Tony Anaya, and uh, Bill Richardson. And as Dr. Armas, he is a uh, nationally known authority on bilingual education programs and founded the Hispanic uh, Latino Health Advisory Committee for UNM. It's really great to have you here today in, in the um, Mercury Library. It's just a real joy. So it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we've known each other for decades. Uh, this is the first time I think that uh, we ever sat uh, across from each other in a real interview. In a recent column uh, in the New Mexican, you wrote, and I quote, so now the governor, Susana Martinez, has made New Mexico safe for the rich. Uh, corporations, perhaps uh, she might pay attention to some of us mortals. Uh, we could sure use her help. <laughs> so I would love you to, uh, to sort of expand on, on your views of, of the governor's reign so far. So let me preface uh, by saying, first of all, that... Uh, um, you know, I've, I've really taken uh, the governor to task uh, uh, for the last uh, three years. Uh, uh, I've issued a report card on her performance as it relates to uh, the Latino community and, and really the disenfranchised. And uh, I, I really take no pleasure in, in having to say that, uh, you know, uh, Susana Martinez uh, is probably going to go uh, down in history as, uh, as being our worst governor. And um, and uh, but she has a track record that uh, is is tough to uh, to ignore. You know, uh, under her regime, um, we've had increasing uh, poverty numbers. We have increasing number of people that are that are hungry. Uh, we've developed now the worst education system in the in the country. Uh, we have people that are leaving the state because they can't find jobs here, uh, and so the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and, um, and, and the worst uh, thing that, uh, about uh, uh, the governor is that, um, you know, she is surrounded by people who don't seem to have a clue uh, of New Mexicans and, and the people at the bottom of uh, the economic scale, you know. So that, that's, that's, that's part of the, I, I think, the, um, the opportunity, I think, uh, for uh, the challengers to uh, her reelection. Uh, which, um, of course, is going to be a difficult thing uh, for whoever it is is going to be the, uh, the, the candidate uh, because uh, uh, this governor has managed to attract. She's become the darling of, uh, of the National Republican Party. You know, she, she gets uh, outside money um, like crazy. I, I mean, I think that the money that she has raised outside of New Mexico uh, totals more than... All five of the, of the Democratic uh, governor uh, candidates, you know, so uh, and, and, and so uh, with, with that kind of influence, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty uh, uh, daunting to consider the fact that uh, it's really going to be outside money that's going to end up, uh, uh, could end up uh, affecting the outcome of, of, of the governor's race. Well, I know there was a, a lot of jokes in the past about her relationship to, to Governor Christie. Uh, of New Jersey and to Governor Palin of Alaska. Um, but I've always been, how should I say it, uh, uh, sort of uh, saddened that uh, those two references and those two associations have been somehow handily forgotten recently. And I wondered if you'd like to, to comment on those. Well, I, I, I certainly hope uh, uh, Governor Christie uh, gets back on his feet because I, I believe, didn't he promise that he was going to uh, 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 consider uh, our governor as his running mate? Yeah, uh, so. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, one of uh, the governor's favorite words is, is unacceptable. And that seems to be one of uh, Governor Christie's favorite words, also unacceptable. So they might make a good match uh, and, uh, and, and maybe they would 
take her quickly, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, but uh, and, oh, and, and Sarah Palin, of course, uh, you know. I, I mean, if if I, I hope she's a, she's a candidate, and, and I certainly hope that uh, she'd be willing to offer uh, our governor a, a place on on her ticket um, uh, to run for uh, president. I, I mean, uh, any place from New Mexico, right? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm just uh, I'm just hoping that she does it uh, quickly, makes a commitment for that. Uh, uh, I'm being facetious, of course. Uh, it, it's not likely that she's going to leave New Mexico, no, but no. Uh, but the reality is that uh, uh, what she's doing is is not uh, good for New Mexico. Uh, I mean, we have now uh, the largest percentage of working poor in the country, uh, and she opposes the minimum wage, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, increasing the minimum wage. How much sense does that make? She wants to call a special session to get the legislature to provide more corporate welfare for an outside company to come into New Mexico to provide jobs. She forgets that the real job creators are the consumers, are the workers who, who buy the products. And, uh, and, and this whole notion of, of, of trickle-down economics uh, that uh, she and, and the Repu Republican Party continue to insist on you know, is 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 a is a bankrupt uh, system. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, Reagan certainly um, has. We're we're suffering the consequences of Reagan economics. You know, and uh, and and this governor continues that failed policy. Um, you know, and all we have to do is look at what's going on. I mean, we we have now the under her leadership, New Mexico has now become uh, the worst state to raise a child. And, and, and this is a designation that is done by an outside organization that takes in something like 11 different factors uh, that, that figures into uh, what makes you a bad place to raise children. And New Mexico has become that under her leadership. Uh, and uh, there is no outrage, uh, apparently. Uh, you know, I mean, people seem to be very uh, timid about uh, challenging the governor of, of pointing out her record and, and pointing out what she's doing that is that is hurting everyday uh, New Mexicans. Uh, she has promised more of the same uh, in her uh, in her uh, this year's agenda and her budget. Uh, you know, is, is is an indication that she has no plans on changing. She's going to continue the same policies, uh, which means that unless something drastic happens. Um, you know, we, we may end up being stuck for another four years with somebody who is anti-worker, anti-union, uh, anti-education, because even though she ran as an education reform uh, candidate and uh, she promised bold education reform, uh, what happened is that 30 days after she, was, uh, she took office, she submitted the biggest cut to education in recorded history. She cut education to 43% of, of the state budget. Under another Republican, uh, Dave Cargo, uh, his education budget made up 55% of the state budget. We dropped all the way down to 43 under her uh, leadership for bold education reform. And, uh, and this is what she considers uh, bold education reform. Uh, and the reality is that we have an education system that is broken. She didn't cause it, but she hasn't done it any good. Uh, and, and we do need education reform, but we need a comprehensive approach. Uh, right now, the people that are getting hammered for the, for the, for the poor achievement uh, and, and the poor graduation rates are teachers and parents. Yes. Those are the ones who get who get the, you know hammered on a daily basis in the media and by the governor and by the uh, her education chief. Uh, uh, they're the ones who are getting uh, hammered, and yet we have higher education uh, that produces a thousand teachers a year, a thousand teachers a year, and these teachers are so ill prepared that they continue failing to educate more than half of New Mexico kids. So there is no education plan. There is no bold, comprehensive education plan. Uh, and uh, she has a program here and there, but a, a program here and there is not a, is not a plan. Yes. And there is no plan.
Uh, and, and to date, there is no plan. Uh, you know, I've, 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 I've been focusing in on, on, on this governor, but the, the reality is that uh, um, I happen to be a part of an organization called the Latino Education Task Force uh, that got started in 2005. Uh, when uh, Governor Bill Richardson was was in office, and uh, and it took us quite a while actually to get him to start paying attention to the education crisis, and uh, I really do credit uh, the Latino Education Task Force that was that included uh, major uh, uh, leaders in, of New Mexico that include uh, Daniel Antonio Her Herrera and Dr. Uh, Mil uh, 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 Milton Brown and. And, and a number of other people, they're the ones who, who, who made uh, an issue of this. But, and, and once the governor uh, got on board, however, uh, Governor Richardson, then he began to make some changes. You know, the, the Governor Richardson, uh, upon the request of, uh, of the task force, uh, they, uh, they convened three major uh, uh, conferences, statewide conferences, that included the Latino community, the Indian community, and the black community. And they brought in uh, expertise and community people and leaders from, uh, from throughout uh, the state. They produced uh, a plan for addressing the elimination of the achievement gap. What happened to those ideas? What happened to those plans? What happens to that time those people contributed? It's on somebody's uh, uh, shelf collecting dust. Right. And so if she was seriously interested in education reform, how would, how would she not want to include the voices of the, of the vast majority of, of the state? Right. And, uh, and yet, this is what is being passed off as bold education reform, which the media seems to uh, think uh, is, is a good uh, approach. And uh, I, I certainly uh, don't understand it. I, I'm, the teachers uh, have been completely demoralized in the state instead of being brought into the fold to uh, con have them contribute their ideas on what to do. They're being left out in the cold. Parents are being left out in the cold. And, um, and, and we still have no light at the end of the tunnel to look at when, it, when, it, when are we going to have a different education system. We need it. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen under the direction that we're having right now. So I've always been interested in, in education reform at the beginning of the process in terms of uh, uh, the education of teachers. And, you know, we've both been fortunate enough uh, to be teaching for a lot of years uh, in one capacity or another. And, you know, it's no easy job. And, and um, But I've always been... I've always been concerned about the quality of teachers that come out of UNN particularly. Uh, so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, about your views about that. And I'd also love to hear about just a rough outline of those of those plans that were developed and that are now uh, gathering dust in somebody's office. You know, the mission of the Latino Education Task Force would be the complete elimination of the achievement gap between uh, children of color and, and white students. Um, and that's a very simple concept. Uh, it's something that everybody can get behind and support. And, um, and, and so that's, that's what we had been pushing. Um, our task force uh, met uh, not only with uh, the College of Education, um, Dean, um, uh, a number of uh, uh, four or five years ago, but uh, we also met uh, with, uh, with the, the councils of, of the schools of education. Uh, uh, around the state, and we got them to commit to developing a plan for how to provide uh, a, a teacher preparation program that would work toward the elimination of the achievement uh, gap. Uh, unfortunately, they have uh, stagnated. Um, they haven't. You don't hear from them. They don't. They don't really say anything. They and, and they should be. They should be at the forefront uh, because they are producing the people, the professionals that are teaching our children. And, um, you know, it, I think it needs to be said, um, you know, uh, people keep touting, uh, you know, oh, we got a 67 percent uh, graduation rate now uh, across the state. Uh, but but we need to understand that uh, uh, those statistics are very flawed uh, because the dropouts and the graduation rates are only really based on four years of, of, of tracking students. 
eight years, eight years, uh, the first eight years of school are not tracked. Those dropouts are not tracked. And, and since a, a great percentage of those kids drop out in middle school, uh, I think we can easily say that today, uh, probably less than half, half of New Mexico students are being graduated. Good. The colleges of education should be assuming responsibility for that. The governor never talks about this, nor does higher education. Right. We have a higher education secretary. I've not heard him utter a, any suggestion on how he's going to address preparing teachers so that they can prepare uh, the students that are going to be our future uh, uh, um, uh, workforce. You know, Latinos, Indians, and, um, and, and black students make up nearly 70% of, uh, of the students in New Mexico. Nearly 70%. If we're failing to educate half of those children, the half of those kids, uh, that's why we have one of the poorest states in the country. And, and yet there is no focus there. Uh, it could very easily be a focus of saying, we are going to graduate these kids. If, in, de in fact, we graduated those kids that were failing, New Mexico would realize uh, uh, additional revenues of more than a billion dollars a year. That's the difference of income uh, that is generated by a high school graduate versus a dropout. And, and, and if you consider the professional degrees that, uh, that, uh, that some of these students would get, then uh, they would be contributing even more. And so it makes economic sense that we create attention on, on, on the target communities that are being uh, most affected by this failing education system. And um, I, I mean, I think, I think um, everybody is pretty much in tune to the fact that we have to do something. Um, and, and I think we need to bring all the constituents in to contribute to the big long-term plan. We need, we need government, we need lawmakers, we need uh, educators, we need unions, we need uh, uh, the business community, and we need the parents. Uh, all of those uh, stakeholders have to have a play on uh, what it is that we have to do different uh, for the future, how it is that we're going to eliminate the achievement gap. Because if everybody was doing that, then, then we would have uh, ideas. One, one of the ideas that came out of uh, one of these conferences, for example, that uh, I think makes a heck of a lot of sense, is that there's, I don't know how many state and county workers there are in, in New Mexico, but there's got to be, uh, I don't know, 40, 50,000 at least, right? Mm -hmm. So if 40 or 50,000 state and county workers were to contribute one hour a week to get a release time of one hour a week to work with at-risk kids, that's 40 or 50,000 kids that could be um, uh, given individual attention, nice. that could be uh, assisted uh, in, uh, in, in helping uh, shape a future that is different from what they uh, are expected to have uh, as, as school dropouts. Uh, uh, and, and these are all ideas that are in those shelves someplace. Um, you know, they've talked about common sense things like uh, smaller classrooms, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, talks about increasing uh, teacher salaries, which makes a lot of sense. They talk about having parents taking ownership of their children's education and having the schools assist parents on how to take uh, ownership of their children's education. These are things that are critical. Uh, to uh, to addressing the the, the crisis that, that that we're facing, and uh, quite frankly, unless we address it, I mean, I, I think education is arguably uh, the most important um, uh, crisis that, that faces our state. We got a lot of problems, but uh, it's all grounded on on the kind of workforce that that we're going to have in the future. And if we have an educated workforce, then we got a possibility of uh, of getting out of um, you know the bottom of the of the barrel in terms of the country, in terms of of of, uh, of social problems and and um, all the negative issues, as well as uh, uh, getting uh, into uh, being able to contribute and attracting uh, good businesses. A good workforce is going to attract good business, uh, but I certainly don't think that we ought to be catering uh, to the big corporations. Uh, you know, um, we have corporations, uh, some of the richest corporations in the world. Uh, who have uh, bases in New Mexico, uh, and and yet 
let me just mention one of them. Intel, one of the richest corporations in the world, receives more corporate welfare in, in, in the form of tax rebates or, or abatements or, or, or tax relief. Or, or They pay no income tax in New Mexico. And they receive more corporate welfare than all the poor people in New Mexico put together. It's amazing. It's terrible. It's amazing, it's isn't it? Terrible. That's one corporation. And, 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 and the governor wants to open up a special session to see what, what, how much more of the farm we can give away to uh, this company that wants to come in and maybe uh, make batteries for cars. You know, we ought to be investing that money into New Mexico businesses. You know, the small businesses are the ones who uh, are the heart of, uh, of the business uh, sector anyway. And uh, we ought to be providing incentives for our, our New Mexico businesses instead of courting all those rich, super rich corporations. They don't need tax breaks. I mean, what, what, what is one of the richest corporations in the world going to do with a million dollars worth of tax breaks or, or 30 million dollars worth of tax breaks? They don't need it. You know, we need it, and our local companies need them, and so we had to put the money there, right? So one of the things that I uh, that I always worry about with dropouts is that <clears throat> is that um, uh, conditions uh, um, and consequences that happen to very young people uh, impact them all the rest of their lives. But I know certainly personally, and I know a great many other people too who were late bloomers who were never very good in school in high school all of public education but at some point in their lives in their late teens or early 20s suddenly came to life and i worry about all those kids who have been who have been bored to death who have you know terrible social problems to deal with who have poverty to deal with who have hunger to deal with don't ever have an opportunity for a second chance or even a third chance which everybody should have in this life and so I'm always wondering what could be done for people who, say, had to drop out of middle school for all kinds of reasons. Maybe some of it very good reasons, uh, you know, like they had to help their families. Uh, what happens then to their future? Is there, is, there, is there anything we can do to help them uh, have that second chance to come alive intellectually? And, and uh, I guess one of the things that I kind of want to, segue into is, is uh, children, youth, and families. As we've, as we've now seen, uh, they have returned, what is it, six or nine million dollars to the state budget. They're horribly understaffed. Uh, this seems to me to be part of a, of a package. And I, I guess I could even go so far as to say that uh, this particular governor seems to have a bias against young people. Yeah, I, I think that speaks to uh, the quality of... Uh of um, a cabinet that she has that is completely out of tune, I believe, with uh, with everyday New Mexican uh, issues. Um, you know, uh, here we are in in one of the poorest uh, uh, states in the country, uh, in one of the states has been designated one of the worst places to raise a child, and we have a children, youth, and families uh, department that returns six million dollars uh, back to the state. Now, either, either that is incompetence or this person just doesn't care uh, about the people that she's supposed to be serving. And what's worse is the governor apologized for, for her uh, incompetence. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and we are allowing that to happen. Uh, you know, and her other uh, cabinet secretaries are, are in the same vein. You know? Uh, you know, the governor does not support the Affordable Care Act uh, uh, that, uh, that, that is supposed to provide health insurance for uh, uh, poor families and, and people that uh, can't afford uh, insurance. Uh, and, um, and, and, and New Mexico has 240,000 people that are eligible for the Affordable Care Act. 240,000 people. Our health secretary only managed to enroll 7,000 people by the end of the year. And, and it's not because they didn't have resources, because the federal government gave New Mexico millions of dollars to advertise to enroll people into the program. But it's been shown that 
in the Republican states where uh, uh, the governors have not supported the Affordable Care Act, that's the places where they have the worst problems for enrollment. Right. And, um, and so now uh, there was a story in the paper today that, um, you know, that behavioral health, uh, for example, uh, is now received, uh, has uh, this year uh, has uh, served 23% less clients than they did last year. 23%. And, and, and we are in the poorest state in the country, and, and we have the kind of problems that we have, and we don't have cabinet secretaries that, that have common sense understanding of, of the realities of these uh, issues and, and can't mobilize um, people to address these crises. Uh, I mean, that, that, that again, it speaks to, uh, you know, why we have a governor who should not be our governor. Uh, you know, I, I mean, where is the outrage? Uh, why, why, why do we allow uh, this governor? And, and believe me, I it it pains me to have to say this about a a, a Latina, know. you know. But but the fact that she's a nice person, the fact that she's a nice lady, that uh, she has a nice smile, uh, does not change the fact that her policies are are not good for New Mexicans. And um, and 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 it pains me to say it again. I, uh, but 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 that's the reality. And um, and and unless we start getting the word out and having people speak up and and pointing out these things that are not working, unless we do that, then then um, then I'm not sure uh, whether there's going to be much of a change in in November. And and that that that's going to be uh, bad news for uh, for all New Mexicans, I believe. So there is a lot of um, a lot of hypocrisy also at foot here. We have uh, um, this incredible effort to, to, to sort of make driving more dangerous in New Mexico by taking away licenses from from undocumented people, uh, which I've always thought was absurd. Uh, and but isn't there a kind of an, kind of an interesting twist here as well? It is kind of ironic that uh, our governor would be uh, taking so many anti-Latino and anti-immigration uh, stances. Uh, you know, she tried in three years. She has tried five different times to uh, do away with uh, uh, with a law that permits undocumented uh, immigrants uh, from uh, driving uh, uh, in in New Mexico. Meaning that they have to study, they have to learn the the rules of the road, they have to pass the test, and they have to have insurance to drive on our streets. Now they're going to be here anyway. They are here anyway, right? So, and yet she is spending all this time and money and effort to try to deny uh, immigrants, um, uh, uh, undocumented immigrants, uh, uh, the right to, uh, to, to drive on, on our streets. And, 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 and I find it a little bit um, troubling, uh, given the fact that uh, um, our governor is an immigrant, right? And interestingly, no, no, uh, in fact, um, I think uh, our governor is what... Uh, the Republicans call as anchor babies, uh, because uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe her father crossed the border uh, without documents, and um, and um, and which would mean that he is an illegal alien. Uh, the governor's father is an illegal alien. The slur that Republicans like to throw on on the undocumented people. And, and, and this is the, the heritage that our governor brings to, uh, to New Mexico. And, uh, and, and, and actually, you know, it is crazy. It's dumb to, uh, to take this kind of position, uh, especially given the fact that um, I, I think that uh, uh, back um, immigration policy, uh, you know, uh, uh, years ago was, was pretty lax. I mean, it was possible for someone to come and go uh, uh, from Mexico into uh, the United States, and uh, people usually uh, went back home after uh, working and so on. So uh, the undocumented uh, being in this country was not a major issue. In fact, um, especially around the border states, uh, uh, Mexican children, it was, it, was a, it was a well-known secret that Mexican children crossed the border to enroll and go to school in our schools. 
And, and this was going on every single day of the year, uh, it, it, you know, every single school day of the year. It created no uh, havoc. It didn't, didn't create any crisis. And uh, uh, in, in fact, it improved relationships and it, it improved the education opportunities for, for everybody. So for our governor to be taking uh, this kind of uh, uh, position against uh, uh, the undocumented uh, is, is really a, a little nuts. You know, I, I, I think we need to go back to the time when her father uh, was crossing the border without papers. And, um, and, and, and I, think that, I, I think the policy then was considered a benign neglect of, of enforcement of uh, immigration. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and really, it, and, until we come to a real sane solution for how to address the immigrant uh, issue, uh, the undocumented issue, you know, I mean, we could have more common sense approaches like uh, the European Union that, uh, that is made up of 30 countries that have open borders. Uh, where there's a free exchange of, of, of people and money and goods and services. And there's no crisis uh, in those 30 countries. Uh, they're rich countries, they're poor countries. And, uh, and, and to have that uh, be uh, uh, the way we operate on the Western Hemisphere is something that, that, that makes a lot of common sense. In fact, you know who pushed that uh, common sense idea was Governor Bush. Uh, he proposed in the year 2000, he proposed the North American Trade uh, uh, Union that would have included Canada, the United States, and Mexico, where this was going to happen. Except that the right wing of his, uh, of his party uh, put a stop to that. So, so now, you know, we continue uh, on a course that uh, we're not really going to have uh, real education reform with the movement that's going on. And uh, it doesn't appear that um, uh, there may be a, a bill that's going to get passed anytime soon in Congress. But uh, uh, whatever it comes to, uh, it's not going to be uh, uh, the, more com the most common sense uh, approach to addressing our immigration uh, issues. And uh, that, that's going to happen down the line, I think, unfortunately. So would you, um, would you agree that there's not only an expressed bias against young people in this administration, but also against Hispanics? You know, um, in, um, uh, there's an unspoken mandate uh, that uh, society is supposed to take care of the majority population. Um, that, that, that is something that exists everywhere in every state except in New Mexico. Uh, and, and in places where people of color uh, are the majority. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Latinos are the majority of New Mexico. But we can't seem to get parity in our own state with a Latina governor. We have a governor that, well, we have a cabinet that is made up of 23 cabinet secretaries, right? And of those 23 cabinet secretaries, if Latinos are the majority of the state, then Latinos should have 12 of those cabinet position uh, jobs, 12. There are actually only four Latinos that our governor managed to find that, that was qualified to fill uh, these positions. And yet, uh, and yet again, every other state seems to overrepresent the majority populations in the top level jobs everywhere except in New Mexico, uh, interestingly enough. And, uh, you know, and, and and, and, and it also speaks to, uh, uh, you know, the unacceptable conditions that we find ourselves in in, in terms of our, the education of our kids. If our kids make up nearly 60 percent of, uh, of the student population in the state, um, you know, there ought to be some focus of attention on the education needs of this special population. They have special education needs. The majority. Because they're the majority. And in fact... In, during uh, uh, Bill Richardson's uh, administration, he advocated uh, with our uh, push uh, the passing of the first Hispanic Education Act in the country. Wow. And so that act was implemented, uh, you know, the year uh, before he left office. And, and that, that Hispanic Education Act mandated several things. It mandated an annual report on the status of education uh, of Latinos. It mandated the creation of a five-year plan for the complete elimination of their achievement gap. 
it mandated uh, for an Hispanic liaison uh, position to be created to work with the addressing the Latino education crisis. And that report that is due every year uh, has not ever been produced on time. And, um, and, and it's never circulated. No, it's that. never talked about. No, and it, it, it gets done and filed someplace. And, um, and so this is a governor that wants education reform and ignores the needs of the majority population of the state. One that already has addressed specific things that, that, uh, that could be done to, to address the elimination of the achievement gap. And, and yet she's ignored this. She ignores it today. Uh, her education secretary, uh, her, her chief, uh, Hannah Scandera, has failed to follow the law that is, mandates these things to be done on a yearly basis. You know, we have, uh, we have uh, all kinds of um, uh, biases that, that surface around uh, uh, the recognition of, of, of the, the majority population of the state, Latinos. Um, we have, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, to tie this uh, to a, uh, um, a news report that came out uh, yesterday, I believe, where Governor, uh, not Governor, but President Obama recognized uh, uh, 24 uh, um, uh, military uh, 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 heroes that uh, had been denied, uh, unjustly denied, uh, the Congressional Medal of Honor um, because of bias. Uh, and uh, he made, uh, he corrected that wrong um, yesterday by recognizing, and there were Latinos, there were blacks, and there were Jews who had been passed over uh, from, from recognition of the, of the Congressional Medal of uh, Honor uh, because of, of their ethnicity or their race or their, their religion. And, um, and, and, and that's at work in New Mexico. Uh, you know, we have we had uh, we had a commitment from the legislature, for example, to recognize uh, uh, two military heroes from Barelas who died uh, in Vietnam. They were lost in, in Vietnam, um, and uh, and 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 now uh, we have lost uh, an opportunity to recognize them, even though the legislature passed an allocation of of, of, uh, of monies to create um, a monument that included the statue of these two young uh, men. Uh, it was uh, uh, Manuel Mo uh, Mora and, um, and, and, and Pete uh, uh, Padilla uh, from uh, Barelas. And, um, and, and our governor has allowed that to happen. Uh, and, um, you know, some people have uh, made just, uh, just wondering, you know, what, what is it about our governor that is so ashamed of our culture that can't find jobs for them, can't recognize their her, uh, heroics, can't recognize their problems and addresses uh, their problems. Uh, what's going on? And she vetoed that money, right? She vetoed that, that money, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and actually, uh, there, there is, a, there is a, a move to revive that project, okay. and in fact, uh, uh, if I can share uh, this information, uh, uh, there's going to be a rally uh, uh, at the National Hispanic Culture Center, which is where the monument was going to go. Oh, yeah. And there's going to be a, a, a rally on, on March 29th. Uh, I think it's going to happen at uh, 1.30. Okay. And uh, the public is invited to come, and uh, there'll be a lot of uh, veterans who will be speaking on behalf of uh, uh, this injustice uh, and, and on behalf of... Uh, trying to uh, uh, do something which is right uh, to recognize uh, two uh, New Mexican uh, Latinos that uh, served their country and died for the country. And, and so we hope uh, people will, will turn out for that. Well, this has been just wonderful, Jose, to have you here. And uh, if you have any, any closing thoughts, I'd love to hear them. And, and I sure hope you come back and talk some more about other things in the future. I hope I, uh, I didn't come out too uh, uh, pessimistic uh, about... Uh, uh, the climate in which we find ourselves. I, I think that uh, uh, if we can encourage our young people, uh, if we can uh, encourage people to speak up, I think that, uh, uh, I mean, New Mexico has a good future and, uh, and uh, the, there, there is a possibility of getting a, a good Democratic candidate into uh, the governor's office if, uh, if they step up uh, 
and start uh, uh, pushing and 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 show some uh, some um, some some uh, interest in in the working people of New Mexico, uh, the poor. Um, you know, even uh, the the Pope has indicated that uh, you know we need to start focusing in on, on our. Uh, our less fortunate um, uh, neighbors and uh, and and create the attention on on them. Uh, if we can do that, I think we might encourage some uh, enthusiasm for uh, for turnout in the in these next elections. So I'm I'm, I'm optimistic.